Renewal Grasps used to be an extremely strong exotic. Pair that with the fact that Stasis used to be by far the best subclass to run because we had access to mods like Supreme Wellmaker and Phantom Might, plus Reed's Regret was arguably the best DPS weapon in the game for almost a year, which made Renewal Grasps an extremely strong exotic to run for mid-game Stasis builds. Things came to an end when Renewals got heavily nerfed. Mainly for PvE, the nerf was with the cooldown, where the base cooldown, aka the tier 3 value, was changed from 62 seconds all the way up to 152 seconds, as long as Renewal Grasps were equipped. This nerf didn't affect Duskfields themselves at all, and it has now been removed. The downside is that Dustfields on their own also received a nerf going from 62 seconds up to 91 seconds. Once again, that is the base or tier 3 discipline value cooldown, so that's why even with this armor set on with renewals, it takes all the way up to like tier 8 or 9 just to get down to where Dustfields once were. Testing the exotic out with some builds in a couple of underpower areas in the game like Legend Avalon, Master Law Sectors, The Legend Campaign, and Neo Muna Patrol, I think the best way I can describe the build is it's solid. Using Whisper of Chains and Renewal Grasp give up to 55% damage resist. Chest piece mods can then offer another smaller percent on top of this, typically up to around 66%. So in a lot of cases, you're going to notice that this DR stacking allows you to tank a lot of damage. This also doesn't even account for the 50% damage reduction for enemies within your Dusk Field. So with that, chains the base DR from Renewals and two chest piece mods, for example, that could stack all the way up to 83% compared to not having anything. The freezing capabilities are also fantastic. Dust fields offer really, really good crowd control, and since you are typically breaking the stasis crystal for regen, that shatter damage is also great. And we're also usually going to have the dust field up every 5 to 10 seconds, so when the DR from the first one wears off, you should usually have another one ready to go. The downside, in my opinion, to this build and stasis in general is that we have practically zero healing. So in endgame content, even though we can tank a lot of damage, eventually without healing, you're gonna die. Mods that generate orbs are a great fix for this, since we can rely on recuperation for healing, but when on stasis, lots of these mods, like firepower, aren't going to synergize with the shatter damage from our nades. And the same thing can happen on frozen enemies that you kill with weapons. The freeze will kill, and it won't count towards siphon mods to make you any orbs. I think this is going to be an extremely strong build that you can bring into areas that you need to give DR to your team, when they can then offer you healing in return. I think having these trade-offs makes it much better in a team-based setting only, and overall are going to hold it back from competing with the current meta builds that we have. When it comes to the stasis subclass for our main abilities, obviously we're running Silence and Squall. For our class ability, we're running Marksman Dodge. We have Marksman for two reasons. One, it has a shorter base cooldown at 29 seconds compared to 38 with Gamblers. And then obviously we can use this to dodge reload something like a rocket to make it more effective to bring this build into DPS rotations for bosses. For our melee, we're running Withering Blade. This is a shuriken. It slightly tracks the enemies, and then once you hit one, it'll ping around between multiple enemies, making it very effective for ad clear. Plus, it applies over 50 slow stacks when you hit an enemy. So you can use two of these because we have multiple charges to quickly freeze an enemy, making it very good against overloads when you're using just the slow, unstops if you want to freeze them and shatter them, or even anti-barriers if you want to freeze them and prevent them from healing. Then for our last main ability, we have Dusk Fields. As most people know, you throw these down, anything stuck inside of its volume are going to be getting slowed and eventually will become frozen. This will be around 30 slow stacks per second. So it'll take around three seconds to fully freeze an enemy caught inside. And then obviously we're gonna be buffing the radius by 50% with one of our aspects, another 25% with our exotics. Plus we're gonna be getting stasis crystals inside of this to offer even more damage resistance and damage reduction through renewal grasps as well. Well, Touch of Winter is going to be by far the most important aspect you can run on this build, with Duskfield specifically. That's where we're getting that 50% increase in their radius size, so we can hit more enemies in that area. And then also, we're now spawning in a small stasis crystal whenever we throw this down, which can then be shot to shatter nearby enemies, dealing damage. But then more importantly, we can combine this with some of our fragments to get increased grenade regen. 
And then second to this, we are running Grim Harvest so that anytime we defeat a slowed or frozen target, we're now spawning in stasis shards. Those shards can then be picked up to give us some melee energy back if we need that, which is kind of nice. But more importantly, this will eventually be giving us armor charge stacks and these will even be tracking to our position so we don't even have to pick these up ourselves. And then lastly, we do have five fragment slots to use. We get two from Touch of Winter and then the final three from using Grim Harvest, as you can see. For our first fragment, we're running Whisper of Torment. This is a grenade-based build, so having high grenade regen is super important. And Whisper of Torment is going to give us 4% grenade energy anytime we take damage. This incurs on a one second cooldown, so we can basically get 4% of our grenade back every single second. But this scales up so that if you're taking damage when your shields are fully depleted and you're down to just your health, instead of getting 4%, we now get 16.7%, which is really large. Whisper of Chains is also extremely strong with this build. Anytime we're near a frozen target or a friendly stasis crystal, we take reduced damage. This is going to be 40%, so it's the main bulk of our damage reduction with this setup. And since we are throwing down a Dusk Field, which gives 25% with renewals, plus 50% if enemies are caught inside of this dealing damage to us, and we now have that stasis crystal from Touch of Winter, we're getting a ton of damage resistance just from throwing down a single Dusk Field. Whisper of Impetus is really strong. I already briefly mentioned this. It's very simple. Anytime we hit an enemy with our Shuriken, or just in general, a melee ability, you're reloading all your stowed weapons. It says stowed. It does also work for your currently equipped weapon as well. So this is extremely useful. Whisper of Shards is also great for grenade regen. Anytime we shatter a stasis crystal, it's going to give us 500% additional base regen for six seconds. And we can also shatter multiple crystals to get all the way up to 10 seconds where it will eventually cap out, making this great when using something like a headstone weapon. And then finally, with Whisper of Conduction, this is more of an ease of use fragment. You could swap this off if you wanted to, but this makes nearby stasis shards track to our position. So we don't really have to worry about collecting these. So practically with the build, you're just getting armor charge stacks on demand as these slowly track to you. Here are all the mods on screen right now. If you guys want to pause the video, copy them yourself and apply them in game. Or as always, there will be a dim link and a mobilitics link in the description down below. Starting with our helmet, very simply, nothing really adds to the build, especially if you're playing solo. I just use a heavy ammo finder to generate heavy ammo, and then a siphon mod, which I tend to swap around depending on the weapon I'm using. I used a lot of funnel web in the gameplay. I also use sunshot or a stasis primary as well to synergize with the build. So you can easily hot swap this as you need. Once again, Renewal Grasps are our exotic of choice, so make sure you're running this with the build to make it as effective as possible. On our gauntlets, very simply, all I have are two copies of Grenade Kickstart. You could do three if you wanted, and you wanted to like sub this stat mod out. I just do two copies. With these, you're getting increased grenade energy back per copy of the mod that you have on, and per the amount of armor charge stacks you have as well. On my chest, I typically have three copies of damage reduction mods. If you are using this build in an activity which you deem extremely easy to survive in and you just want to play on stasis for whatever reason, offer DR to your teammates. I do think running something like charged up can be very beneficial. You can swap this out here and go from three armor charge stacks up to four now, which is then going to feed directly into increased grenade energy per armor charge that you have with grenade kickstart. On our legs, we are running Recuperation. This is really the only healing we have with the build. Orbs will give us 70 HP back. With stacks on stacks, this doubles the amount of armor charge stacks we get anytime we become charged. And this does feed directly into Elemental Charge, so that now our Stasis Shards can have an escalating chance to give us armor charge stacks, where instead of getting one, we are now getting two with stacks on stacks and this working together. Lastly, for my class item, Reaper is great. As you're going to see in a lot of the gameplay, I'm spamming my dodge, even when I don't really need to use the dodge so that I can activate Bomber. And then with Bomber, that's going to feed into Reaper so we can make even more Orbs power on our next weapon final blow. As I mentioned, Bomber will just give us grenade energy back anytime we use our class ability. And then finally, I do have Powerful Attraction so that as we're dodging, because we're spamming dodges, we're collecting any Orb of Power nearby. And the main reason for that isn't actually for our armor charge stacks, but just so that we can collect recuperation orbs and stay alive. That is it for the video, guys. Let me know your thoughts on the build and renewal grasp as a whole. Hopefully next season with some artifact mods to carry, Stasis should be feeling a lot stronger. 
I do also stream a bunch over on my Twitch. We're currently running Garden of Salvation speedruns three to four nights a week and doing other stuff on the off nights. A link to my Twitch is in the description down below if you guys ever want to stop by. As always, have a good one, guys. Peace.